So uh, this video is about uh, Poncelet cross-ratio invariance, and we're looking at a bicentric pentagram or five periodic family. Uh, let's animate this family. Get rid of uh, this instability. Mathematica has this weird uh, drawing uh, problem with with circles. Uh, so let's ignore that shaking there. Uh, so you can see this family here. It's a Poncelletian family in the sense that you depart from a point on the on an outer conic. In this case, the outer conic is a circle. Then you find a tangent to an inner conic. In our case, this is a bicentric family, so the inner conic is also a circle. So here's the first tangent. Then you, you draw this chord to the circle. Then you repeat the tangent finding procedure. You find P4, and then you find P3, and P2, and P1. Okay. Now you can see that the vertices are not really ordered here. Their labels are not ordered, but in the way that the trajectory is proceeding. But this is immaterial. Okay, now we want to define two chords, okay, related to this family. Now we're going to do something special here for the pentagram. These three, actually we want to find three chords. The three chords are going to be sides of the pentagram. So a first chord here is connecting P1 to P2. A second chord is connecting P1 to P5. These are segments of the trajectory. And a cross chord, or cross diagonal, is connecting these uh, two vertices that are sort of direct neighbors to P1 along the circle, okay? So here's my cross diagonal. And along this cross diagonal, I can define uh, four vertices that are collinear, two of them, the endpoints, being vertices of the traje trajectory, and two inner ones being vertices of the intersection of this chord with this particular cross chord, okay? So now we have this labeling A, C, B, D, uh, just because of the way this trajectory is weaved in. It doesn't really matter what these letters stand for, but specific order they're in uh, are going to allow us to compute a particular cross-ratio. So recall that the cross-ratio is a quantity that you can compute when you have four collinear points. Okay, And I have six orderings of those four collinear points that will compute out six different uh, cross-ratio values. It is true that they're related to one another, I'll leave a link in the description so you can look this up. But here I'm computing a cross ratio along this cross chord, okay, uh, with points designated as A, C, B, D. Okay, and I'm computing a cross ratio and I'm reporting it here, 0 0.6420. Okay, and you can see that the cross ratio so computed, okay, is a varying quantity. Now you're going to notice here that the sum of cross ratios is also a varying quantity. Okay, before I did this video, I know I, I was just uh, showing these quantities with six or seven uh, decimal places, and this sum looked like it was constant, but it is not constant. And the reason I knew it could not be constant is for a reason that I'm going to show you in a couple of minutes. Okay, however, the product of these cross ratios, and what do I mean by sum and product? Let's just review what we defined before. I can define these three diagonals, these uh, Diagonals emanating from P1 and the cross diagonal cyclically over all vertices. So, for example, I'm now on P1. Let's now make P2 play the role of P1. So, let's go over to P2. There it is. So, here's P2. So, now I have two diagonals leaving P2. Okay. And I have a cross diagonal connecting the two vertices that are immediately next to P2 along the circle. Okay. I can do the same thing for P3. So I can define this guy cyclically on P3. So I have my two diagonals here leaving P3. And I have a cross diagonal uh, over the two vertices that are immediately neighbors of P3, immediate neighbors of P3. So I can do this for the five vertices on this pentagram. And I can, of course, sum the cross ratios obtained in each one of the combinations. And I can also, and they're going to be distinct numbers, those five numbers. And I can also take the product. Now, a first thing you notice here when you do this, let's go back to P1 being the anchor vertex over here. When you do this, you notice that over the family, the sum is not constant, but the product is. Okay? Now let's now order these four collinear points uh, using the second possible ordering that results in a different cross ratio. So I'm going to do second ordering here. Uh, in this case here, it's A, D, B, C. And let's look at what happens when we do this. We got a different value for the cross ratio, but now both sum and product are invariant. Compare with the previous case where only the product was invariant. 
So for this particular ordering of ADBC along the cross diagonal, I'm getting this phenomenon. You can see here that up to 10 decimal places, the difference of product to sum is exactly three integral units. Okay, so not only do we have this phenomenon of invariance, we have this phenomenon of three integral units when you deduct the sum from the product. I'm reporting that difference here, and I'm also reporting, just to see if there's anything interesting, the ratio of the product by the sum. Okay, so this number doesn't look like it's a rational number. Okay, all right, now let's choose the third ordering of my uh, four collinear points along that cross diagonal. In this fourth, uh, sorry, in this third ordering, only the product is constant, not the sum. Now let's move over to the fourth ordering, A, D, C, B. Now both are constant, and again, we have the situation where the difference is three, but now it is the sum that is three units above the product. Okay, let's go to the fifth ordering. Um, so now we have the situation where both are invariant, but that difference is no longer a recognizable number. But both are invariant. And let's go to the sixth and final ordering. Again, we have that both are invariant, but that difference is not a recognizable number. Now, I want you guys to uh, now recall... Well, before we go to that other example, let's now do a similar example to this. So let's just recap, right? We have six orderings of four points along this uh, cross uh, diagonal here. And out of those six... Uh, out of those six, the first one conserves only perimeter, uh, on perimeter, only product of uh, cross ratios. The second one conserves both, with the difference being three units. The third one conserves again only product. The fourth one conserves both, with the difference now being uh, minus three if you deduct the sum from the product. The fifth one conserves both, but the difference is not recognizable. And the sixth one conserves both, the difference is not recognizable. So out of the six possible orderings here, four are maintaining uh, the both product and sum constant, and two of them are only maintaining the product constant. Okay, And out of those four that maintain both constant, two of them uh, prescribe a difference of three integral units between sum and product. Okay, so this is the first battery of results. Now I want you guys to compare this battery of results with when we, instead of taking the pentagram, we're going to be taking a five-gon family. So let's take the five-gon bicentric family, which I have over here, and I believe it's going to be this one. Um, actually, this one with the diagonals. So here's a five-gon bicentric family. We're going to repeat the same procedure. Here's so now you don't have self-intersections. You have a five-gon family inscribed or interscribed between two circles. It's a bicentric family. And now I can play the same game. Okay, let's uh, start investigating what's happening to these cyclical sums of cross ratios and product, cyclical products of cross ratios. So my very first arrangement here, which is actually the exact same arrangement if you think of this diagonal here as being a side of my pentagram, okay? You can think of this as being a side of my pentagram, and this as being two other sides of the pentagram. You can complete the pentagram here, right? In your mind's eye, you can complete the pentagram by connecting op opposing vertices here, except that if you did this here, the caustic of this pentagram family would not be a circle. So this would not be a bicentric family. It would be an outer circle and an inner ellipse. Okay, and I just want to uh, 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 make a shout out to my, my friend Mark Hellman because... Uh, he can work with uh, uh, Poncelet families that have a circumcircle. So you would have a Poncelet family here with a circumcircle of pentagrams whose caustic is not a circle. Okay, so we can easily construct one from this original bicentric family. All right, so when we look at this um, uh, family of five gons, okay, and we have this cross uh, chord and these uh, two other chords, we can play the same game. We start the first uh, labeling A, B, C, D in this case, and we notice here, just like in the pentagram case, the sum is not conserved, the product is in this first arrangement. Let's go to the second ordering. Both are conserved, and the difference is three. So the sum is three units above the product. Let's go to the third arrangement. Now only the product is conserved. You can see here that there's a little bit of uh, wiggling going on in the sum. Let's go to the fourth arrangement. A, C, D, B. Both are conserved. The difference is 3 to the 5th. 
Both are conserved, but the distance or the difference is not recognizable. And let's go to the sixth one. Both are conserved and the difference is not recognizable. Okay, so we're getting the same pattern. We have six combinations of labelings of that of those four collinear points. We have that uh, uh, out of those labelings, four of them will conserve simultaneously sum and product, and two out of those four will uh, prescribe a difference of three units between sum and product, and then two of those combinations will only conserve uh, product. Okay. Now, just to close this video. I want to recall what we had in the previous one. We're actually not studying a bicentric pair. Uh, we're studying five gons, Poncelle, five periodics, in a, uh, I believe, non-concentric, non-axis aligned pair. So here's a non-concentric, non-axis aligned ellipse pair. And here's a family of five gons. Now you may ask yourself, what does this have to do with a bicentric family? We're just looking at okay so we could be looking at this one for example we could be looking at this one as well here's a here's a, a family of pentagrams right inscribed in or interscribed between two ellipses not two circles and these ellipses are not even axis aligned and uh, concentric so what is the relationship between this and the bicentric family well they are related to each other so this pentagram family is related to that bicentric family via a, a projective transformation. Okay, so either one is a projective image of one another, modulo, some one-dimensional thing that you have to do because you actually have a one-dimensional family of bicentrics that admit uh, such a family of pentagrams. So I'm not saying that this particular family is the exact projective image of that bicentric one we saw. Uh, you still have to do some adjustments in terms of what exact pair of circles out of that one-dimensional family of pairs of circles you're going to choose. So it's truly a precise image of this one over here. But uh, as you know, uh, projective transformations, they conserve, or let's, let's say this way, across ratios are invariant and under projection, uh, projective transformations. So it's enough for us to understand this family, okay, or its uh, properties using the bicentric pair. But let's now look to see if the properties that we saw in the original bicentric one so let's look let's bring it back here to the screen so here's my bicentric self intersected uh, here's my bicentric self intersected we noticed those properties that you know, out of the six orderings four of them produced or conserved uh, uh, sum and product simultaneously let's see if those same properties manifest themselves when our pair is this uh, pair of ellipses two Two, in, two nested ellipses in some generic position. So to do this, I have to find the concentric pair like that. And I believe, non-concentric, right? I believe it would be this one over here. Yes. And I'm going to build my, my chords. Actually, we're talking about the pentagram, but it doesn't matter. Now let's do the, the pentagram. Uh, non-concentric, tilt one. Yes. So this is good enough. So here's... What I'm telling you guys is modulus some one-dimensional subspace, a projective transformation of that original one. And let's see if the same properties are verified here. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and make this guy go around. Ooh, the instability of the caustic by courtesy of mathematic is a bit too big here. But let's ignore that the caustic is shaking around. Okay. Let's even turn off its axis. Maybe that's going to improve it a bit. All right. So what am I doing here? I'm... Uh, Considering the first ordering of letters, I'm seeing that the sum is not conserved, but the product is. This matches the behavior in the bicentric pair. Let's go to the second ordering. Both are conserved, and the sum is three units above the product. I believe up to a signal this matches what we got in the bicentric pentagrams. Let's go to the third arrangement. Only product is conserved. I believe this matches what we got in the bicentric arrangement. How about the fourth ordering? Now we have both conserved and the distance is three. I think this is up to a minus sign, the same behavior in the bicentric pair. Let's go to the fifth ordering. Again, I'm conserving both, but the difference is not recognizable. And let's go to the sixth ordering. I'm conserving both, but the difference is not recognizable. Now let's, let's actually just compare this. You see here that we're getting something like 15.28 and 176. Let's see what we're getting for this ordering, okay? In the bicentric case, so let's go to the bicentric case, um, self-intersected, so 15 and 176. 
So here's my bicentric case, except that I selected the wrong one. Let's get this one here. Oops. This one over here. So what am I getting here in terms of sums and products? I'm not getting uh, the ones that I was getting before. I'm getting smaller numbers. So it doesn't look like the numbers are the same. Okay, the numbers are not the same, but the invariance is the same. Now, the numbers could be made exactly the same since cross ratios are invariant under the projected transformations. Had I selected the specific pair of circles here, that is a true uh, projective image of the uh, pair that I had in mind before. Okay, uh, but I'm not doing that. So, if I had done that, the actual values of those cross ratios would be invariant under that specific. Uh, transformation and I would get everything to be exactly the same but what we care about here is actually that the behavior of uh, constant sums or, uh, and constant products are happening exactly so the simultaneous invariance is happening exactly for four of the ordering choices how about for this guy here when it's not self intersected so here's uh, n equals five not, not self intersected uh, in the bicentric pair I just need to find that I believe that's this one. Okay, so we also saw the properties for this guy, and I'm going to claim to you guys up to some, uh, this one dimensional subspace, that this is also the projective image of the non concentric, not self intersected case, which is this one. And we should experience so the assembly, the, the construction is the same. I have P1 to P3, P1 to P4, and a crossbar. And when we do this and we go to our first arrangement, you're going to see that you got the same behavior. Here's the first lettering, A, B, C, D. Only product is being conserved, not sum. You go to the second one. Both are conserved. The difference is minus 3. You go to the third one. Only product is conserved. You go to the fourth one. Both are conserved, and now the difference is exactly 3. You can see that they're both conserved. You go to the fifth one. Both are conserved. Now it's uh, the difference is not a recognizable number. And then you finally go to the last one. Both are conserved and the difference is not a recognizable number. So what we're saying here is that it suffices for us to look at the, the bicentric situation because all the other ones are projective images of it. Okay. So I guess just to summarize what we did in this video, we looked at this non-concentric, non-axis aligned family okay, uh, of simple and gons. We also looked at this family uh, for the case where you have self-intersected five gons, two ellipses, non-concentric, not axis aligned. Okay. Then we compare those two sets of results in terms of invariance of sum of cross ratios and products with those obtained in, first of all, the five gons in a bicentric pair, if I can find it. Here's five gons. Uh, in a bicentric pair, but I want this guy here with similarly constructed chords, three chords, right? And we made this guy turn around and we found that there were four combinations uh, uh, of A, B, C, D that produced uh, simultaneously invariant cross ratio, sum of cross ratios, cyclically defined and product of cross ratios. And finally, we also looked at this five gone family when it is self intersected. So it would be this case here. And we got the same result. Now, I'm just going to finish with a very quick comment. In this case here, I don't have to select segments that, uh, as, as my chords, uh, segments of my trajectory. I could select just as well these sort of outer diagonals of my uh, self-intersected uh, uh, family. And then the four collinear points would be a bit more out there, right? Where's my... Uh, there it is. So here's, oops, I have to scale this down quite a bit so I can see A, B now are internal. And now I have these two intersections of the uh, P1, P3 segment with the A, B segment. I got D and then I have P1, P4 with A, B and I got C. Now, if I make this guy turn around a little bit, I can make C come closer and I can scale this up a little bit. Now, C, A, B, D are collinear, right? And now I can define, I can play the same game. I have four collinear points, and I can compute the uh, uh, cross ratio with respect to P1, the sum, the cyclical sum, and the cyclical product. And I'm going to get the exact same set of phenomena. I'm going to go through six combinations of A, B, C, D. Four of them are going to conserve both. Two of them are only going to conserve 
uh, and, uh, and two of them are only going to conserve uh, product. And out of those four that conserve both, two of them are going to produce uh, differences that are exactly equal to three. So let's just quickly cycle through them. Here's the first one that only conserves uh, product. Here's the second one that's going to conserve both. It's the exact same logic. You're getting a difference of three. You go to the third one, uh, only conserves product. You go to the fourth combination, conserves both with the difference now having switched signs. Okay, you go to the fifth, and you get uh, the same situation. Both conserved, but the difference is no longer recognizable. And the sixth one, both conserved, the difference is no longer recognizable. The same thing ha can be done if you consider now the dual image of this, uh, quote unquote, when I use the word dual, not in the inversive sense. But I'm going to now consider uh, the bicentric family, go back to the bicentric family of um, five gons. Now, instead of selecting internal, uh, internal chords, internal diagonals, I'm going to use the sides of the five gons. So I'm going to use P1 to P5, P1 to P2, and P3 to P4 as my diagonals. So let's do that. I'm using now P1 to P2, P2 to P5, P1 to P5, and then this third one here, and there's going to be two intersections of this and this with that. So let's look at those inter where those intersections lie. They're going to be collinear with A, B. Oh, one of them is all the way out there. Let's make it come closer to the system so I can show it to you guys a bit better. Maybe it's never going to come very close. Okay, here it is. It's pretty, and the locus of this thing is probably an interesting curve itself, right? Could be an ellipse. I'm not sure. Uh, but, yeah, it's probably going to be an ellipse. Uh, so maybe a circle. I don't know. So here are the four collinear points. And now I have a simple five gone. I have these two chords over here, P1, P5, P1, P2, and this third chord. And then I get an intersection at C here of P1, P5 with P3, P4, and a collinear intersection D of P4, P3 with P1, P2. And now I can compute cross ratios. And what am I going to get? The exact same behavior. Uh, in my very first choice of lettering, I only conserve product. Uh, in the second choice of lettering, uh, of labeling, I conserve both. The difference is three. On my third choice of labeling, I only conserve product. On the fourth one, conserve both. Difference three. The fifth one, conserve both. Distance is unrecognizable. Difference is unrecognizable. And the sixth one, conserve both. Uh, distance is or difference is unrecognizable. Okay. All right. So there you are. We have two bicentric families. Five gone, five periodic families, two bicentric families, one self-intersected, the other one not. And we're comparing cross-ratio invariants of these two families with, let's call them, the projective images of these two families, where you have uh, Poncelle five periodics interscribed between um, ellipses in some generic position. Here's one, five gone simple, and here's one self-intersected uh, generic position of ellipses. And it looks like these four families with respect to orderings and diagonal choices are displaying the exact same type of phenomena out of the six orderings. All of them, all of these four families uh, are displaying four orderings with simultaneous conservation of product and sum of cross ratios. Two of them only conserve product, not the sum. And out of the two, uh, two out of the four which conserve both, in two cases, the difference is three integral units. All right, I guess that's a lot of information, but we've established perhaps a nice bridge between this pair here and the bicentric pair. Okay, thanks for your time, and I'll see you in the next video.